looking at the wall, he draws a full circle with a line under it for his sister to hopefully see. The door to the classroom opens and the room fills with kids. Night. The nun sends the boys to their room. I heard you did well today, David. See what happens when you embrace the Lord? Umqui gives a small smile and nods. Yes, sister. The nun shuts off the lights and leaves the room. Umqui waits a few moments until the nun is gone. Umqui peers out the window from his bed and sees the moon half full. It's not much time. Morning. The students are in line waiting to get into their class. Peter is doing his best to shelter Umqui from being discovered. Umqui stealthily etches a circle with three lines representing people next to it in an area close to the girls' section of the school. Peter is having a harder time holding back his coughs. Hey, you gotta... <coughs> you gotta hurry! She's coming this way! <coughs> Umqui finishes and falls black in line. The nun looks at Peter. What's the matter with you? No, <coughs> nothing, sister. Just as well. At least wipe your nose. You look disgusting. Peter wipes his nose with his sleeve as the nun walks back to the front of the line. Peter, you're getting worse. Nah. Now nah, have this beaten a couple of days. <coughs> in class, Umqui is attentive. He follows along in class. Back in line outside the class, he glances over to where he made the markings, hoping to see a response. Nothing. Umqui is in the field, tilling the ground, only thinking about his sister. They are all lined up again, but nothing on the wall. At lunch, Umqui eats his food, breaks off a piece of bread, and sneaks it into his pocket. He looks at Pete, who can't control his coughing. Umqui is in class again, still attentive, but slightly worried about his sister. The sun sets before the final class. Back in line, Umqui finally sees a response next to his markings. At night, Umqui looks at the moon and sees it's three quarters full. The next morning, the boys are all lined up again. Umqui tries to hold back his anger. He sees a marking left by its sister. It's a horizontal line and next to it, a taller vertical line. He tries to hold back his tears. He etches a three-quarter circle with three lines next to it. What happened? Umqui, what's going on? We leave tonight. What? <coughs> we leave tonight. Peter sees the drawing left behind and doesn't question any further. He holds his chest to hold back another cough. Yeah, okay. <coughs> I never liked this place anyway. <coughs> Umqui is angry but tries not to show his emotion in class. At lunch, Umqui rations his meals and puts the rest in his pockets. He encourages Peter to do the same. Peter's condition is worsening. At day's end, Umqui sees her reply on a wall. A square with three lines outside of it. The boys' sleeping quarters. It's past midnight and the sky is clear. He opens his eyes and looks at the door. No signs of light or activity and makes his way to Peter. He gently shakes Peter. He looks lifeless, his breathing short. Pete, Pete, it's time. Pete. Umqui shakes him some more. Peter opens his eyes, his voice is raspy. Hey, <coughs> I was having the best dream in a long time. Umqui tries to hold back his tears. It's time to go. <coughs> yeah, I know. I don't think... I don't think I'll be going with you, though. You can make it. We'll get out of here and we'll get something to fix you up. <sighs> this is as far as I can go. I don't have the energy. I'll just slow you down. No, you won't. We can do this. I'm so I'm so tired, Umqui. I can't make the journey. I just need to rest. <coughs> you made things interesting, though. I'm going to miss you. I'm not leaving here without you. You don't have a, <coughs> you don't have a choice. Your sister needs you. This place has taken a lot away, but it hasn't taken you. Don't let it take her either. It's up to you to help everyone here. 
And you can't do it if you're here. Go. Peter closes his eyes. Umqui tries to hold back his tears. Umqui holds on to Peter's lifeless hand. He takes his medicine bag and places it in Peter's hand. Goodbye, friend. Umqui sneaks out of the room. He gingerly walks towards the girl section. He approaches their wing and he hears heavy footsteps. He hides in the corner, hoping not to be seen. The priest walks past him and enters the girl's dorm. The door is not shut completely. Umqui has to wait a moment before he attempts to enter. He peers in and sees the priest's silhouette in the far corner hunched over a girl's bed. Umqui tries to find his sister. He creeps up to one bed, only to find a girl petrified with tears running down her cheek. Shh, it's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. Can you tell me where Montelais is? The terrified girl nods and points in her direction. It's fairly close to where the priest is. Maltele has her eyes tightly shut. She doesn't want the priest near her. She feels a hand over her mouth and her eyes widen. The hand is not an adult's, but her brother's. She looks over and sees him. He signals for her to be quiet. He gingerly helps her out of the bed and signals for her to take a blanket. Umqui directs her to where to go. He stays at her bedside to make sure it's safe. She knocks at bedpost. The priest is startled. I told you children to remain quiet or there will be severe punishments for all. He lurches over the bed of his victim. Umqui can't take it any longer. He stands up and grips the bedposts. You've stolen enough from us. Umqui rams the bed into the priest, knocking him to the ground. Run, Ma! Don't look back! Just run! Umqui grabs her hand, and they rush out of the dorm room. They run down a corridor and a set of stairs. Umqui is trying to find a place to escape. Around the corner, they are guided by a stream of moonlight out a window. They run to the window where the moonlight is shining bright. The priest gets up from the assault. He locks the door of the girl's room and tries to catch up with the escapees. I knew you'd come for me. I couldn't let this place take your spirit. Umqui tries to open the window, but it's jammed. He tries to push it open. Maul can hear the shallow footsteps of the priest approaching. Hurry, I hear someone coming. Umqui cracks the window open, but there's only enough room for Maul to fit through. Okay, you go first. See those bushes over there? Run over and hide. I'll be right behind you. He helps her out the window and gives her a blanket and his rationed food. Stay warm. She makes it and waits for him. He's struggling to inch the window open. I told you to go hide. I'm not leaving without you. Umqui looks back and sees the silhouette of the priests. Think you can escape? No one escapes here until they're purified. Umqui raises the window a slight inch and tries to get out. Maul takes his hand and tries to help him out, but he's stuck. I, I can't get out. I'm stuck. You're going to have to go on without me. I'm not leaving without you. She continues to pull. Umqui gets jerked back. The priest grabs a hold of his foot. Get back in here, you wretched child. Ma, go! No! Umqui tries to kick his way free. He kicks the priest in the face, which knocks him out. Ma pulls with every ounce of strength and manages to pull Umqui out. They both fall to the ground. Ma helps her brother up. Thanks, sis. Lights turn on in the background. Hurry! They both rush off under the cover of night. The school is but a silhouette behind them in the night sky. They stop when they know the coast is clear. Where do we go now? Umqui looks up at the sky to get directions. He grabs her hand to lead the way. Home. The end. <laughs>